Hey guys, how are you all? Is that in focus? Yeah. So guys, yeah, it's about what time? Seven. Here's Andrita. And say hi. Where are we going? Um, we are going to okay. UAV. What? That's my driver. Don't mind. <laughs> Same Barabara closed. closed. Barabara closed. Yeah. UAP building. Uh, yeah, we are going to the breast cancer awareness campaign. October it is. Uh, yeah, with ST loader. Oh, bumps. ST loader, and I told you a full month wearing saris. So this is my love and life. And oh, and I told you it's a full month of saris. This is my Africa necklace that I bought the other day. Pink sari, love and light T-shirt. It's pretty dark, but yeah, I'll give Henrita the camera later to show you guys my outfit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram where there is wow wow wait why is this road not tarmacked yet it's a new building guys so oops one second yeah okay so yeah that's what we're doing and uh, the uh, dress code is a hint of pink for me there's lots of pink Rita is all pinked out <laughs> yeah and yeah we're just heading for this campaign uh, Chanel bracelet here and then look what I bought the other day guys Africa this is all brass made locally here in Africa my bag is a very old Gucci and yeah let's head over it has been such a long day I'm so tired I've been wearing this makeup since like midday it's now 8 p.m. I'm pretty pretty tired but I will share with you some snippets of this event we're late. We missed the uh, get the lighting of the building, right? Mm -hmm. So they lit the whole building in like red or pink. Yeah. Check the lifts. Oh my Floor, and this is my outfit. Love and light t shirt. Sorry, Africa. Love and light from me to you. Get these while they're still hot. And this is my outfit. Yeah. Indian earrings. African chain. Africa. Chanel bracelet. Oh my god, I feel like I'm rushing. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's me, guys, for today. likely has a breast cancer story. After all, every 15 seconds, somewhere in the world, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. And when breast cancer affects one of us, it affects all of us. It is the hope for a cure that unites us all. Our goal hasn't changed since Evelyn H. Lauder co-created the Pink Ribbon and started the Breast Cancer Campaign in 1992. We are committed to creating a breast cancer-free world. Every day, people all around the globe come together to raise awareness, funds, and inspire action in making that goal a reality. Indeed, significant progress has been made, but there is still work to be done. My mother had the vision to expand the value system, what we now call corporate social responsibility. I would call it an element of humanity. Since the campaign's launch, the Estelauder Companies has raised more than $79 million globally to fund life-saving research, education, and medical services. Of that, $65 million has funded 260 medical research grants through the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which Evelyn also founded in 1993 and is the highest-rated non-profit breast cancer organization in the U.S dedicated to advancing the world's most promising research to eradicate breast cancer. In addition, we continue to support more than 60 organizations around the world, all aligned to our mission. I've seen firsthand the research we are funding in action, spoken to many leaders in the field and know how hopeful they all remain. Every year and every day, Evelyn's pioneering vision continues to move us, turning hope into life-saving realities. I'd like to be able to save lives. Our commitment to creating a world without breast cancer is stronger than ever. 
It's time we take action and increase education. It's time we develop new treatments and fund new research so that every 15 seconds somewhere in the world a woman is not diagnosed with breast cancer. It's time to end breast cancer. We, along with over 46,000 proud employees, have been leading the movement since the beginning and will continue to do so until breast cancer everywhere is only part of history. Together, we work towards a breast cancer-free world, one life, one ribbon, one second at a time. Like Evelyn once said, it really is something that can never be done by any one person. It has to be done by a group. Join us in our mission. Visit elcompanies.com forward slash breast cancer campaign. Follow the Essilor companies on social media and join the conversation using hashtag time to end breast cancer. Kenyan friends of the brand, Anjali Garfi, who's a new senior news anchor, a staunch activist and motivational speaker, as well as Badania Barasa, former top model and managing director at Two Image Africa, as ambassadors for this campaign. They have shared their stories publicly and are warriors and survivors in their own right. Their stories and features will be highlighted throughout the course of the campaign and this is just a preview of what's to come. Dear Anjali, it's okay to be scared. I know you have a million questions. Questions that don't make sense, filled with doubt, filled with no answers, and it's perfectly fine to be that way. When nothing makes sense, and this is why you're probably on this path, on this journey to begin to make sense of yourself, of the power within you, and find the true essence. I love you, I love the energy Enjoy it, accept it, embrace it. Go with that positive mindset. Strong mind, strong girl. What you're going to need is great family support. Um, eat lovely organic food. Meditate and pray. Don't forget to pray. But worry not. Because as we share our stories, you can donate to this campaign and help end breast cancer. It's really a historical celebration. My name is Mario Zaroni, and I represent uh, the SLR companies across um, Sub Saharan Africa. <clears throat> and I'm truly honored uh, to work for this company. Um, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, American companies embrace a cause. Uh, in this day and age, a little bit because they have to. Um, Estee Lauder was started by uh, a real pioneer um, uh, back uh, in, the, in the 50s. And for the last 80 years, um, the, the, the vast majority, of course, of the business, but the vast majority of the focus as Estee Lauder has been with um, the, the, the raison d'etre. Of, of the company is indeed to to celebrate each woman's individual beauty and, and through uh, uh, the variety of work that gets done uh, worldwide, uh, this remains the core mission uh, of the company. Um, I want to mention a few facts uh, that I think are really staggering, uh, and I'm saying this despite the fact that I am myself not a woman, but 86% um, of the employees of the Estee Lauder companies worldwide are women. Uh, over half of the people in senior leadership position at the Estee Lauder companies are women, and half of our board of director is uh, represented by women. So it, it is only natural that, that the largest philanthropic initiative of this, uh, of this corporation um, is around this disease 
uh, that affects first and foremost women. I say first and foremost because of course it's a disease that affects daughters, mothers, grandmothers, but, but because uh, uh, of the way it affects them, it affects the entirety of, of the families that it touches. So uh, uh, there's a real alignment uh, between this cause that, that the corporation has embraced, uh, uh, if you want, very deliberately in 1992, and it's very uh, reason to be. I think this evening is an impact your overall wellness. So we, we do drive those two agendas. And it is under our wellness program that we partner with other institutions, you know, to drive awareness like what we're doing this evening. So we see a lot of synergy with what Lord does and what we do as an organization to drive awareness across the country and across the, the territories that we do business, just to make people aware of what they need to do to prevent and to manage this disease. Apart from that, through our UAP or Mutual Foundation in East Africa, we do run clinics out there. This year alone, we've run clinics in Bungoma, in Bumula, in Meru, through our partnership with Africa Cancer Foundation, AMPATH, and AMREF. During these clinics, we do screening and offer advice to those uh, who need you know, further and specialist um, you know, diagnosis uh, around uh, you know, cancer and other non-communicable diseases. You may want to ask yourself, why as an insurance company would we invest in this? Three reasons. One, we have a health insurance business in our group. It costs us a lot of money to pay claims when people are sick. So it is in our interest to invest in people's wellness because when Kenyans are well, our business thrives. When women are happy and beautiful, our business thrives. And by the way, statistically, women are some of the best clients that insurance companies go for. You know they live longer than men. <laughs> All factors are constant. <laughs> so that's what we call in insurance language, good mortality risk. <laughs> so when women are happy, our business is happy. Again, you see the link and how our partnership with Esther Lodi makes a lot of sense. So that is something that we do uh, through um, our UAP or Mutual Foundation. So we do a lot of clinics across the country um, and amongst communities that may not necessarily afford um, you know, the facilities uh, to scan and to detect uh, some of these uh, conditions. Traditionally in African societies, we shy away from planning for certain eventualities. For staff participation um, and a very, very social ca um, calendar that I've had a look at for the next coming four weeks. So very excited to see what that yields. Um, plus, then on Friday, the 25th of October, both Estee Lauder companies and Linton's will be at UAP um, building for, um, in the building for a fun full day. So, sure to look out for, for those announcements um, as well. We also have some social media collaborations with uh, True Love magazine. So be sure to get your October issue of the magazine um, where we also have our breast cancer advert um, in there. They will also run a social media competition um, for some lucky readers to attend the breast cancer luncheon. And speaking about the luncheon, we will commemorate the end of the official breast cancer campaign um, with a beautiful luncheon on Saturday the 26th of October, so save the date, at Hemingway's uh, Boutique Hotel. And this is where we will also hand over a cheque donation to a worthy organization um, that will soon be announced. So keep watching this space. That was before, <laughs> that's after. <laughs> um, so before I end- provides for his family. Apologies. 
So before I end, I would like to actually share a video from the UAP and I think more to what uh, Mr. Otieno was speaking about in terms of critical illness and the package um, that is on offer. John provides for his family. He pays his children school fees. He has a mortgage for their home and handles many other financial obligations. But John fell ill, requiring an organ transplant. However, his medical insurance limit could only cover a small part of his bill. And his bill amounted to, well, a whole lot. But John was already prepared, considering he had previously taken a critical illness cover from UAP Old Mutual. A smart move, which came in handy right when he did not expect it. Critical illnesses are expensive and cause unexpected financial burdens. UAP Old Mutual Critical Illness Cover caters to a range of critical illnesses such as open heart surgery, cancer, heart attacks, renal or kidney failure, strokes, blindness, including other illnesses. Plus, with UAP Old Mutual Critical Illness Cover, the beneficiary gets a cash payout at the first detection of critical illness. In addition, one can also seek treatment at a facility of their choice and ultimately manage the lifestyle changes that come with a diagnosis, giving one peace of mind to recover and go on taking care of other responsibilities without any financial strain just like John did. With these and much more, you can rest assured that you'll make the right choice with the UAP Old Mutual Critical Illness Cover, which offers an individual cover like John took, as well as the UAP Old Mutual Group Critical Illness Cover, which he later took for his employees. To know more about UAP Old Mutual Critical Illness Cover, visit www.uapoldmutual.com or call 0711 065 100 or visit your nearest UAP Old Mutual branch today. So be sure to follow the movement um, and the conversations um, around this amazing campaign um, by following and adding the um, hashtag time to end breast cancer to all your posts on social media. Follow our ambassadors, Anjali and um, Badania. Follow Be the Linton's Beauty World, UAP, True Love Magazine, and of course, um, ELCCompanies.com stroke, for stroke uh, breast cancer campaign. Really, um, we are truly excited for this and um, can't wait to, to come back next year and, and make it even bigger. Um, lastly, thank you to everybody um, for making tonight um, a success. And um, please join us for more refreshments and um, a sign to sign. Thank you. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> hi, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you. So guys, we are leaving now and look at what Estee Lauder has. Wow, goodie bags. What's in them? Can we take a peek? Oh my goodness me and it's guys look it is a beautiful pink scarf thanks Estee Lauder thank you very much and keep doing this amazing fabulous job and guys please shop Estee Lauder you guys know I am their Estee Lauder forever girl so you guys saw me this is it Estee Lauder so guys that is the UAP building that is lit in pink 
in honor of the breast campaign, breast cancer campaign, guys. There you go. <laughs> Return. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at the person. I know. <laughs> so, guys, let me let me fill you in. This is really funny. This is my PA, Andrew. Hello. Uh, you know what she did? Just, just own up. What did I, they do? So, before we got here, we went to another building, uh, the UAP. We went to the wrong building. The, the one that guys. lit up, actually. The ones that lit up. But the event was in the opposite building. And then we went to the 14th floor. And then there's nobody there on the nobody. 14th floor. So I was like, uh, are you sure? And she goes like, yeah. It's then uh, she called one of the uh, SD loader people and she said, no, no, come to the 15th floor. So I said, oh, let's so go to the 15th floor. We went to the 15th floor. <laughs> there was nobody. It was spin drop silent. And I said to Arita, can I look out for some snipers? Are there any snipers? <laughs> Wait, is it a, is setup? It a setup? I was like, what? Someone wants to kill me. Is it a <laughs> the paranoia was real. Yeah. And then I told her to look at the invite. And where was the event? At, the, at what? Crown Plaza. We were at, the, at Crown Plaza. We were in the wrong building the whole time. On 15th floor. <laughs> She's saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I think she just gave me a red wine and I calmed down. But we made. Hey, guys. Wow. It is so hot. I've just finished filming. And uh, yeah, I'm off for another meeting. It is about 4 p.m., not 3.30. And it is Wednesday and I quickly want to share this dress Zara Hall Mumbai but it's so big I should have bought a small quickly quickly and my battery is flashing there you go this is the dress it's asymmetrical it's a medium I should have got a small and my shoes are Dune they are amazing mules this most comfortable mule I ever wore so just rushing for a very quick meeting so just rushing for a very 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 quick meeting hey guys good morning it is Thursday I just finished doing my nails and I came to the office and did a lot of work and so far the nails I had to chop them all off because they were so long and then the these ones are broken so I opted for orange and oh can you see hang on yeah there you go a very bright orange and then some stickers and then on my right hand, the same orange. And my Swarovski crystals that I love, as you should. So that and that. Having some coffee. Oh, I bought these in Mumbai, you guys remember? Sticky notes. Dream big and work hard. I was just working. And yeah, it's a sunny, sunny day. And I wanted to share that I bought this little porcelain Ganesha from the airport and this my mom gave me and the Krishna was given to me by uh, was it Sneha's mom or Sneha? or Karishma yes that is that and this is an outfit of the day quickly it's a red jumpsuit it's new from Zara this is part of the haul that I wanted to share and uh, Gucci belt it's a size small just really nice pleated uh, you can wear it with a belt or not, but I preferred the belt. And then, of course, these dune um, mules that I am just, I'm flipping over. I'm dying. This is the only thing I'm wearing. Every day, that's the shoe I'm wearing. So, this is my outfit. Well, guys, I just got home. And it is super hot. Kids are doing the skating lesson. I just changed into this kaftan this is a mint green chicken it's called chicken kaftan it's just a long comfy outfit lipstick is out ignore that because we have something important to discuss oops one second yeah so many of you i had told you guys i will be speaking you know to you just about what i think about faith and when you're facing a tough time a difficult time in your life uh, and so forth. No, I have realized that when you face difficult times in your life, you need to, you need to reevaluate that situation in your head, in your heart, in your soul, and uh, mentally, basically, spiritually, emotionally, and figure out uh, that the situation that you are in—it could be any situation. These situations only make us stronger. Where there is pain, where there is war, where there is conflict, you have to remember that. Um, 
you know, very often we say, why God? Why, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Or why again? Uh, I don't deserve this. I've been a good person all my life. But did you know that God chooses his special loved ones to go through pain? Why? Because God makes you go through pain in order for you to, in order God makes us go through pain in order to purify us when we shed tears, in order to purify us so that we can come closer to Him. That is the intention here. It's almost as if like a <clears throat> a seed when you think of uh, a tree and a seed. You know, think of yourself as a seed, so powerful yet so small. But once you plant that seed, that is when it grows. So think of it as God has planted a seed in you and that is what is your growth, that is your becoming, that is your rise. <coughs> what you see as a weakness is actually strength. What you call a problem, as uh, one person I was watching, Stephen, he says what you call a, a problem, God calls it a harvest. So it is not a problem, it is a harvest. Uh, you know, we live in this day and age when we say, uh, when I when this happens to me then I will do this when this happens to me then I will do this I'll be able to help others but no God says act in the now in the present the problems that you may be facing may be having somebody else's harvest it might have the benefit of someone else and you are going to be the living example the living example of blessing others with that harvest and then get your own harvest so believe in God believe in the process that he is purifying you to get you closer to him we, we keep on asking, why me? Why did it happen to me? Why is my mother sick? Why does she have cancer? She struggled all her life. Uh, why did I have a really bad childhood? It is in that suffering that we get purified and we get closer spiritually to God. And <clears throat> we learn so much about it. Jesus suffered for all of us, for all of us. Even when he carried his cross, he carried it alone. The Romans were hitting him and he carried it. He carried that burden because he knew he could. The father cannot forsake his child. He cannot give you a burden that you may not be able to carry. You have to believe that uh, God is fighting your war. God is fighting your battle, whatever that may be. God is fighting it for you. So when you feel like giving up, call on his name and tell him God I can no longer do this take the battle whatever it may be this is your fight you fight it for me it doesn't matter what people say how they judge you how they look at you because eventually God's harvest does come or God's truth does show up and even when you feel like those questions are coming back again why 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 me remember God is using you God is using you to set an example for others God is using you as his child so that others or non-believers can believe in the miracles that God is able to do your life is a living testament uh, because we have a living God your life is going to be a living testament to others to for others to believe that yes, there is a God and miracles do happen and faith and prayer can move mountains. I mean, when you read uh, in the Bible about the story of uh, David and his brother Eliab and Goliath, uh, David and his brother Eliab and uh, uh, Goliath, I mean, how big was Goliath? Like a monster, correct? And how small was David? And I remember reading uh, <coughs> reading uh, about it and not so sure you I stand to be corrected but David was against his brother and there was a point he was not even looking at Goliath that is behind him and he couldn't believe that he could fight him and at one point he turned around and we turned around he instead of seeing Eliab and being resentful to his brother he saw the the enemy that is the true enemy so sometimes God gives us so much trouble and puts things in place for us to see and sometimes we are not even seeing them because we are not looking at the enemy the enemy is deceiving us by showing us those who are close to us so we can fight those who are close to us but yet we are so blind because we do not see that the enemy is actually someone else the enemy is from the outside the enemy the evil person or the evil the enemy is from the outside that evil uh, is hiding itself and deceiving you into believing to fight your own Goliath was a monster 
but David still fought and victory was his. So it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter how big your war is. Give it to God because at the moment you may not be able to see victory, but it will come. It doesn't matter how big the enemy is. It does not matter. But if you give it to God and you have faith, enough faith and patience, then even those monsters, you can fight. You can fight. All it takes is firm belief, prayer, and patience. So many times when um, trusting, trusting in God, having faith, that's what I'm trying to be at. Having faith in God uh, seems like a, a difficult task to do. I know I, I have been there. I do it sometimes, even subconsciously. But be conscious about this. You keep on saying, I am trying to do this. I am trying, but I reap no rewards. I am trying hard to work. I am trying hard for abundance. I am trying hard to go to church or the mosque or the temple. I am trying so hard to be kind. I am trying to heal. But God says, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Sometimes our trying comes in between our trust. Can you stop trying and trust and have faith in that God, whoever it is that you believe in, because I believe God is one, we give it God different names, whoever it is. Do you trust in the Father up there in heaven and do you trust, do you trust in Him enough to give Him your burden? Do you trust in Him to get up out of your bed if you are in depression? Do you trust Him? enough to uh, relieve you of your anxiety do you trust him enough to give it your all and let it be with god and then see the miracles happen do you trust him do you trust him to keep on trying do you trust him well i would say when approaching uh, god it doesn't matter how big you are when you went to a church a mosque a temple it is not about who is the biggest that is the most valuable to God. It is not about why is he so rich and I am not. Why doesn't he have problems and I do. Why are they not sick and we are. We normally tend to ask questions such as these to God. And I remember asking this myself four years ago. When my mom got uh, diagnosed uh, with uh, carcinoma. And I, I tell you that when you go to God you humble yourself. You humble yourself because when God hits, there's a very good Gujarati saying, I forget it, because God can crush that pride into powder. You can imagine like the Titanic, it was a maiden, it was the, you can imagine like the Titanic, it was a huge ship and on its maiden voyage, it sank, the ship that could never sink. Pride comes before a fall so make sure that you wash away all your pride humble yourself before your god and others because if you do not that you spirit being close to god and being proud cannot come together you must give yourself up you must give your soul your heart your everything you must surrender maybe that's the word i'm looking for you must surrender completely and wholly all have problems correct we're all human we are in this human body in this human spirit and we will be going through problems i always say where there is an uphill there's a downhill where there's a downhill there will be an uphill or uh, my mother says very well that after when you're stitching something you put a, uh, uh, a needle that goes through the cloth and then the the thread follows it goes like that needle and thread and that is the cycle of life and that is what i'm trying to say is that um humble i think being humble humbling yourself before god and even before your own enemies is a victory on its own how many of you have read the gita but all the indians will understand in the gita which is the holy book of the in uh, the hindus um in the gita ram lord rama was sent away by his own father on the seven vas which is like uh, basically he was disowned and sent out to the forest for so many years and he could not return home because of his stepmother and he served this sentence just like Jesus out, just out of his good uh, good heart because he was the son of God and just because of his good heart he did not want any fights in the kingdom and he said it's okay so off he went with his wife Sita to the forest for so many years and that's why Diwali is celebrated with fireworks because it is a return of Lord Rama back into his kingdom after serving so many years away which is like say not prison but um how would i say to be sent away right i can't get the words right now i'm super tired guys and these builders are bo bothering me anyway so he was sent away his brother lakshman went with him and his wife sita 
And during that time away, for so many years, there was an enemy and the enemy was Ravan or Ravana. So the enemy was called Ravan and he had this huge, huge castle. Castle and the castle was all made of uh, gold. It's called, it was called, uh, the castle was all made of gold. It was called Lanka. But even then, when this bad Ravan kidnapped Lord Ram's wife, who was Sita, uh, Lord Ram fought back and even this king who had a castle of gold, it was all burnt down by Hanuman who was a Lord Ram's devotee, a very big devotee. And uh, this is this is what hits me when I think I, it means that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which king you are, where, how much you have because in in the court of God, Nothing matters how much money you have, who you are, what you did, how, much, how many charities you did, but only your deeds, your good deeds and your bad deeds. Your karma, your karma is uh, whatever that you have to pay back or debt in this world and your dharma. And your dharma means the good deeds you have done. So in the court of law, nothing else matters. God does not see... Uh, how much money you have to oppose or defend or uh, apply, I don't know, yeah, in the court of law none of that matters, in the, court of, uh, in the court of God none of that matters, one thing matters, how pure you are, how truthful you are, how God loving you are and how pure you are and then you will see God's hand, God's hand on you, you will see God's work in your life and you will believe, you will believe that there is a living God, that the God is within all of us, in each of us. I am a firm believer that even though I go to Shirdi, I go to here, I go there, I just like the spiritual experiences, but I do believe God lives in each one of us. See within yourself, seek within yourself, and you will see God. You will see the hand of God. You will see the power of the Almighty. Do not ask God why me, do not question God. Do not, because he knows why he chose you. He knows why he chose my mom. She suffered all her life. I've stopped asking him. She suffered all her life. She's never seen a good day. And when it was time for her to be happy, then boom, came cancer. So, I will not question God. Even the time when came when we were supposed to spend time with my father, boom, he passed on in sleep. Immediately my brother passed away. Another of my mom was raped of her only son by death. Do we question God? No. We just believe, we accept. I think the biggest lesson I have learned is just accept it. Accept your troubles, accept your suffering. Even that is a blessing. Accept, see your suffering as a blessing from God. Because trust me, only the chosen ones do uh, go through this phase. And like I said, maybe our lives become testaments they become the stories that yes there is a living god and that god is working through us maybe god is working through me right now i don't know but yes accept that suffering accept it and believe it and take it it is a test god tests us all it is a test and then see god's healing see god's power give it to him and go to sleep that's all guys there was a song we were singing yeah and my stuff the other day when we took you to the uh, giraffe center Mungu uh, peke. It means only God. Yeah. So the words are, say it with me, Mungu peke. Uh, only God. Lots of love and light, guys.